Okay, what we have here is my first impressions of The Pope's War on Science. This is 8-Bits, uh, a.k.a. Brian O'Connor. Uh, entry for the 2009 Terrible Games Contest for the OHRPG CE. Um, this one promises to be blasphemous, I'm sure, um, and I'm going to disclaim right here, uh, just in case any of my more religious friends or relatives happen to browse across my uh, uh, YouTube page, I didn't make this. So, here we go. What do you have in store for us, 8-Bit? The Pope's War on Science, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Eat the Jesus. Sacrilicious. Somewhere in the Vatican, Pope Pius Denius Bagaius uh, the 22nd believes he is communicating with God through his pastrami on rye sandwich. That happened to me once. What's that, Lord? Condoms actually spread AIDS, you say? But that seems so counterintuitive. Well, you're the boss, and I'm infallible, so... Pope Pius Denius Bagaius the 22nd takes a bite of his sandwich. Mmm, you are delicious, my lord. Doth thou accept this cheese upon thy wafer that doth be your son's body, tis Pepper Jack. Nice telephone sound effect. I don't think that's really the Pope's ringtone. What's this? Doth the papal phone ring? Excuse me, O oh lord, whilst I answer it. I kind of think of a ringtone more like, you know, a Gregorian chants or, uh, or bells, maybe. That's purely speculation. Okay, let's see. I walk over and answer the phone. Talk to me. This is God. Hear oh. This is God. Hear my voice and tremble. Bishop McCartney, is that you? No, you dolt. It is I, the burner of the bush, the parter of the sea, the smiter of the smitten, the creator of the amusement park, the... Oh, God. How doth it hang? Hey, weren't, weren't you just in my sandwich? You twit, shut up and listen. The unholy army of science is assaulting the Vatican. They have breached the outer defenses and are running amok through the hallways. As we speak, my word is being desecrated and my holy lands trodden upon by the filthy feet of nefarious, knowledge-seeking knuckleheads. Dear God, what am I to do, dear God? Get your papal ass out there and make them feel your righteousness. Yes, Lord, with Jesus as my witness, I will smite them. Okay, I presume this is the door I go through to begin the smi smiting. Eat it, science. Ah, science. So. That's uh, sound effects. Repent! Repent! Past that science. Go tell it on the mountain. Fossil evidence. Repent. Carbon dated rock. <laughs> now, uh, hi Yahweh. Oh, what is this? Condom. Oh dear. Now this is interesting. How uh, in in the in the, the the context of a parody, this uh, this game uh, draws attention to what I think is a is a is a big misconception about religion, about Christianity by many Christians, is that uh, is that faith is exclusive to science. And uh, I think that's I think that's really uh, I mean it's really ridiculous that so many people feel that way that uh, that you can't believe in evolution and for example evolution and uh, and creation at the same time that these things have to be mutually exclusive. Um, but actually, and, and, you, and you find this on both sides, both uh, both in religious circles and in. Uh, in, uh, for, for lack of a better word, uh, 
uh, atheistic circles, you, you you get this kind of black and white thinking where people think, you know, you know, it's it's all or nothing, my way or the highway. Um, I really liked um, I really liked something that uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Stephen Hawking wrote in his book Galapagos uh, Finch. Um, it wrote in his book uh, Brief History of Time. Uh, he said that you know, even though he, he's one of the guys who 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 co came up with the whole idea of the Big Bang, and he, and he said that the, the Big Bang doesn't prove that God doesn't exist. He said the the purpose of the big of the Big Bang theory, the purpose of this cosmology, is not to prove that God doesn't exist. It's it's just to steady, you know, figure out what happened, what we can what we can learn from the natural world around us. He said it doesn't say it doesn't prove that Big Bang does not prove that God doesn't exist. It just establishes when he did his work, um, and that I think that's a really healthy way for somebody, uh, somebody who believes in God, to look at science. Is that um, God is always there beyond the uh, beyond the limits of what you're looking. Uh, you know, God, God is always there in the unknown. And no matter how much we learn, there's always going to be unknown beyond what we learn. And uh, uh, people who have faith in God don't need to be feel they don't need to feel threatened by science. Um, <sighs> Babel fury. So that's my periodic, <laughs> periodic table. <laughs> Oh, I love that periodic table. Alright. I think I'm approaching... Oh, okay, this can only be the big man himself. Hello, Pope! And by big man, I mean, uh, yeah, that other guy. Uh, hello, Pope Pius Denius Bagaius the... 22nd. It is I, Dar Darwin's floating head. I am the one responsible for this assault on the Vatican. Now you will die. He should have said, now you'll be naturally selected. Repent. Oh, I gotta use some of my other menus. Let's see. Wafer toss. The body of Christ. Miracles. Oh, locusts. Gotta have locusts. Blood. Down the heathen. Uh, Gamora. Oh, you're Gamora. <laughs> uh oh. And all along, uh, all along, he was Satan in disguise. Let's see. Hi, you know. This Pope is really infallible. He has not taken one hit point of damage yet. Eat some original sin. So Pope Pius Denius Paganus, the 22nd, I remembered at that time, reached out and grasped the Holy Grail, which he didn't even know he was searching for. Darwin's floating head turned out to be Satan in disguise, again. Science has been utterly denied, and many more innocents shall be burned for practicing witchcraft. The Pope can finish, can finally return to his chambers and finish devouring the pastrami on rice sandwich in which he believes is the Lord. The end. Okay, that that was uh, that was a lot more fun and a lot less sacrilegious than I expected, which is not to say it wasn't sacrilegious at all. Actually, it was quite a bit, but in a fun and friendly way that I can appreciate. Thank you for that eight bit.